don't know that uh, PB and J is gonna be very upset because he is the biggest Dark Wizzy, or not Dark Wizzy, but Wizrobe Stan. Um, oh, so sorry, sorry. Yeah, Wizrobe. Sorry, my yeah, mistake. Yeah, Wizrobe, Wizrobe. <laughs> there, there's yeah. like, there's like three Wiz. There's like a Wiz kid, Dark Wizzy, and Wizrobe. Don't, don't yeah. feel bad. We get them all mixed up. <laughs> it's like they were, they were all using the same name generator. <laughs> I, I sometimes wonder whether like Dark Wizzy was like. If he wanted Wizrobe and realized it was taken, or if he was just like a fan of like Wizrobe, is like I'm just gonna put my own spin on it. That's right. Just cap on right, right afterwards. But being uh, being a really patient Falcon player in melee, I would assume that Wizrobe would op like opt for a character with a lot of movement to be able to just kind of be be uh, be defensive just by out uh, out mobilizing his opponent, right? So I'm guessing a character more like Greninja, somebody who's just like. Who doesn't really have the best set of shield options? That's not what you're looking for, anyway. Yeah, you know, Greninja obviously, like we kind of talked about when our, our first match on the stream started off. Uh, Greninja obviously has some different tools. Up air strings are a lot better now, and then yeah. of course dash attack. He has a lot of room for opportunity, a lot of room for imagination. I like what we've seen in uh, in the previous iteration. We always talked about Greninja being like the secret mid high tier, the secret high tier that like nobody knew about, and then like Somay kind of came in, and uh, same with um, what was the, what was the other gentleman in oh. Europe? His, uh, oh. I studying. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. studying, obviously, pushing the Greninja meta. But I think in this game, Greninja is really starting to flourish, and I'm really appreciative of it. Yeah, yeah. Also, um, at Frostbite as well, we had some very strong performances. By yeah, Greninja. Leia, Leia, Leia. Yeah, Leia doing fantastic work in the crew battle, taking, what, seven stocks against yeah. some of the U.S.'s finest. That was ended incredible. Up, uh, ended up falling, though, his last game to MBD, if I'm not mistaken. He played yeah, against MVD. MBD that final game. MBD, obviously, phenomenal all the way across the board. And I can see how projectile zoning could be a little rough for Greninja, even though Greninja's blessed with some really good movement options. Snake, I mean, between the C4, being able to cook the grenades before he tosses them, the up smash, which is a projectile too. Then, of course, Nikita, don't get me started on that, especially with Greninja not having any hitbox on his up B. Like, there's just a lot to be desired in that matchup for Greninja. Yeah, but it's not Greninja. It is going to be the wolf coming out from Wizard, which makes a lot of sense. This is a yes, very sir. fantastic character. And, you know, being being the competitor he is across multiple Smash games, trying to be a specialist in too many of them with, like, the more offshoot characters isn't really uh, doesn't really value your, your time investment the most. Whereas Wolf is a character you can pick up, and with a solid understanding of how Smash mechanics work, you can find a lot of rewards right off the bat. Man, I hate Wolf. I'm sorry, man. <laughs> I'm, I'm feeling a little loose right now, man. I hate Wolf. Yeah. Like, his character is very difficult to... No, I'm just kidding. No, but... Yeah. No, all jokes aside, his character I, is um, <laughs> very very difficult to fight, but appreciative of his return here in the Smash. I was just like, man, maybe Sakura, you might have made him a little... Just a little too good. Just just a little too good. Like, maybe his weaknesses off stage just weren't quite enough. Like, his down Smash on the Legend of States, ridiculous. I'm like, yo, what? That wasn't even a two-frame. Like, you literally just stuck your arm off the Legend of States and caught me. <laughs> and I'm tight. Yeah, it's so it's so disjointed. The sweet spot feels massive, and the yeah, opponent's like uh, gonna has, be. You have oh. like a Diddy Kong villager up tilt too. Like it just comes out quick and kills you. We also have uh, Midnight Toast though. Is gonna be his opponent, rocking the Mega Man. Ordinarily a character that tries to slow down the tempo of the game, right? Um, but when you have to deal with Wolf's Blaster, it just kind of has that transcendence to go through everything. And then also the Reflector, it can be a lot harder for Mega Man to control that pacing. That's right, but the great thing about this is that he can low profile. He can't quite move in, obviously. He doesn't have a crawl animation, but he can low profile the neutral special. So as long as he doesn't get hit by it up close, he's okay. But the fact of the matter is that you don't want to be too close because you throw a projectile, Wolf has the, the ability to reflect it. But you also don't want to be too far away because your limits don't travel the full distance of the screen. Okay, good paces right there. I thought we were going to see a grab, but he tries to hit him with the back air. Right now, we have uh, Midnight Toast actually leaning a lot on that Leaf Shield. Again, a fantastic option at a disadvantage for Mega Man. Comes out so fast, just without anything right in your face. Uh-huh. Oh, up wow. smash for his trouble. Try to scoop him up off the lead. Smart stuff. D drops the item, and then yeah. again, the great thing about Mega Man is that he can use, like, slightly charged forward smash there as, like, a good uh, read option as you try to get up off the ledge of stage. So very sneaky, so very deceptively good stuff for Mega Man in this game. Grab. Oh! Beautiful oh, oh, stop. Oh. Doing the Metal Blade right into the Shoryu. Right now, Midnight Toast leading just by a hair, but against Wolf, yeah, it's nothing. That's right, man. Wolf sound full of hair, fam. What are you <laughs> talking about? <laughs> Super less. fine robot, man. Yes, That's he's right. got hair under the helmet, though. I don't does, know why oh, Dr. Does. Light gave him hair. Does. That's kind of creepy. It's like, where did you get that hair from? <laughs> That's not organic. Where'd you get that hair from, sir? You've been you grave ever, digging. You ever notice how, like, Wiley never gives any of his robots hair, but Dr. Light makes sure all of them does? I don't know why. You're OD. You're <laughs> right, man. That's a question we got to ask Beta64, man, on YouTube. Okay.
There's a dash attack. I like that. So obviously using the leash to give himself some coverage. Understanding that the leash gives him some good combo options. And Wolf is a very easy character to combo. Trying to find Axe there with the short hop Nair. Clanking into the limits. Like he's going to have to be a little bit more safe on how he decides to approach here. Obviously short hop Nair. Very, very good option here uh, for a Wizrobe when it comes to putting on percent. And obviously finding KO options. But man, what beats the forest smash though. Beautiful stuff. Yeah, great recognition by Wizzy that just uh, Midnight Toast tossed the Leaf Shield the wrong way. No hesitation from that point onward. And Wizzy's just kind of grinding out this neutral bit by bit. He's not really in a rush to do much. He's kind of showing the hole in Midnight Toast's game plan. It's just like, you can throw the lemons, and they do like 0.9%, and right. you can crouch under my blaster, but like, where do you kill me? Where do you start juggling me in this game plan? Because when I hit you, you pop in the air, and I start getting in big, big damage for it. That's right, and you know, studies show too with how both how both of these characters play to each other's weaknesses. Obviously, they both do really well at combo each other, but here's the part where things get a little rough for uh, for almost at Fox for Wolf. When Wolf gets off stage, back air, obviously a very good option for it air. Um, and then of course the fact that he can direct the air dodge away so far, he doesn't have to worry about down smash or forward smash here from my man. Wait, wait, oh wait, wait a minute, hold up oh. a minute. I thought he still had his up B. I feel like he's, yeah. I thought he still had more gas in the tank, GP. Yeah. I, I thought, I don't know what I thought, man. I'm learning things I never knew I never knew, man. Uh, Dr. Light with some really, uh, really questionable energy features on his robots right there. No fuel <laughs> left in that tank. I I don't know. I don't know, Rod, what happened. But uh, whatever it was, I'm not sure Midnight Toast was quite ready for it either. Uh, but that's going to leave, uh, you know, Wizrobe up ahead pretty solidly with a two stock. And uh, it looked like more and more in his control as that game went on. Uh, especially, even though Mega Man had a few tricks to get around some of the edge guarding by Wolf, it was just a lot more abuse that he was putting on to that super fighting robot. Yeah, he really went ham, man. Um, so he was starting to use short hop near to kind of negate the pellets. And I get how pellets can be kind of bothersome for Wolf. It's like you kind of talked about towards the middle of the match. It's not yeah. enough for Wolf to just stay out and play the long game. He has to figure out a way to get in and put on percent. And I think like Leaf Shield and the pellets really kind of got under his skin. But once he did decide to get in, though, that's when, you know, Midnight Toast really got toasted, man. Like, he was like, oh, I don't really know what to do, man. Wolf is smothering me. He's crossed me up with Nair, crossed me up with Forder. What am I to do, man? We'll see how well he adapts on the fly here as we move into game number two, man. Wizzy right now going up a game. Uh, we're all here on Kalos uh, Pokemon League, so we got more room to work with. Yeah, this is perfect for a zoner, right? This is what Midnight Toast wants to get himself as much space as possible to play his long-term game. And more importantly, because he was finding himself edge guarded a lot, these platforms near the ledges are going to give him that extra layer of ambiguity to make his way back onto the stage when he's sent off. Uh huh. Okay. Deceptively uh, placed platforms here. I've always felt like the platforms are 50 50. They either aid you or they just like screw you up. Like there, yeah. there is no middle ground where like you got on the platform and you took like 10%. If you let that platform and get hit, you're taking like 50 every time. Yeah, you're you're either dead or you just got out of jail for free. That's right. Okay, high recovery. The beautifully placed air dodge right into the fourth though right here. Midnight Toast looking to butter up my man Wizzy right here. Be coming down with the metal blade. And I love this. Yeah, going out there to harass us a little bit. Midnight Toast not making these recoveries a black and white free deal for Wizrub, at least giving him moments to hesitate and maybe risk less conventional recovery paths back to the stage. Uh -huh. Okay. Wow, Showing each just, other a lot of respect. Yeah. That's right. That was a lot of respect. Maybe too much respect right there, man. The backer closing out that first stock here. Okay. The late forward air. What's he about to do? It gets the sour spot there on the hard knuckle. We'll take those nonetheless, man. The name of the game is taking stocks, man, not percent. Ooh, fourth or right in the dash attack. Some very simplistic stuff here. Midnight Toast not able to find his own confirm off his down throw, but still gets the Leaf Shield right afterwards for the reset. I like this. He's, he's tossing on Leaf Shield the moment he sees Wizzy take to the air, and he's just trying to cover his landing, just stand right under him, because you can't block in the air. Okay. Okay, Z drops his item. I like that. Has the gizmo, the gear in hand. Staying up there on the platform, too. And there we go. We have Midnight Toast actually taking the present lead, so now we can really slow down the game and take full advantage of it, because it's up to uh, Wizrobe to make up that percent difference. Uh oh, but as we talk about percent, man, the percent is certainly starting to climb here. Midnight Toast certainly heating this matchup. Oh, okay. A little overzealous here with the forward. I'm not exactly sure what that was. Maybe he expected Wizzy uh, to fall through the platform to try to get uh, get away from the up airs. Oh my god, the back air. Yeah, forward air to back air. Such a strong conversion by uh, Wizrobe just catching him right at the ledge at that 60 70% sweet spot to close it out. 
I love that. I love Wake Up Sure You. I, it makes me happy uh, every single time. <laughs> what game is this, Jeepik? I thought this was Ultimate. What the hell? He's, he's a Capcom fighter. They all learned it. That's fair. <laughs> all right, man. 50%. Uh, not the worst position to be in in the world. God dang. And then knowing how much to charge the Forest Mask so that it travels a longer distance away than the, the fully charged one. That was some really good situation awareness here by Midnight Toast. Draw this match even closer here. But right as I say that, though, man, Wizro finding more access to the Nair as he pushes my man Midnight uh, Toast off stage. Yeah, back into that corner, Midnight Toast doing a good job mixing up what exactly he's doing off the ledge. He's not overusing that platform either as an escape. This rip, though, that time, finding himself that back air, and then find the next one. Nearly escaping there to back air. Had to burn the air dodge. At the nick of time, the dash attack right into the down smash, man. Some very tried and true wolf stuff to say the least.